Today's lesson, the sign graph. Your objectives for today. Students will graph y equals sign x, understand changes in amplitude and period, evaluate the domain and range. Prior knowledge needed for today's lesson. Evaluate sign of any angle, convert radians to and from degrees, and know how to evaluate the domain and range looking at a graph. Okay, we're going to start with example one. We're going to graph y equals the sine of x. So what we're going to do, first of all, is I've pre-selected some values of x, and I just thought it'd be nice if we just count by 30s all the way around the circle from zero to 360. Let's recall that the sine of an angle is y over r. But remember, if we're in the unit circle, the sine of an angle is just the y coordinate. So if we know the x and y coordinate, very easy to find the sine of an angle. So if we're looking for zero, Zero falls right on the axis, zero degrees. So we'll use a circle. Recall that this point is over one, up nothing. So the y coordinate is zero. Therefore, the sine of zero degrees is zero. Now, 30 degrees, we remember how to find the sine of 30 degrees. We can simply draw our one, two radical three triangle and see that the sine of 30 degrees opposite over hypotenuse is one half. And 60 degrees is just as easy, opposite. And I'm writing down 30 and 60 because we'll use those over and over to fill up the table quickly. Opposite over hypotenuse. The only thing we have to do now is figure out the reference angles. Also, we need to be aware of our signs. Remember, all students take calculus. Now, 90 degrees is here at the point zero, 01, so y coordinate is 1. Um, 120 would have a 60 degree reference, so that's radical 3 over 2. Oh, let's check the sine. We're in the sine quadrant, so sine is positive. 150 would have a 30 degree reference, so the sine of 30 degrees is one half, and it's in the sine quadrant, so it's positive. 180 has a coordinate of negative one zero, so sine is zero, because that's the y coordinate. 210 would have a 30 degree reference, so we know the sine of 30 is one half, but in the third quadrant, sine is negative. Um, also, our next angle has a reference, 240 has a reference of 60, so that's radical three over two, but it's negative in this quadrant. 270, we have the point zero, negative one. So that has a y coordinate of negative one. Now we have 300 has a reference of 60. Radical three over two is the sine of 60 degrees. In this quadrant, sine is negative and one half has a reference of 30. I mean, 330 has a reference of 30, which is negative a half. And 360, we're all the way back around, is zero. So now what we're going to do is put this on a coordinate plane. And we're going to plot these coordinates. So starting with zero, zero. Oh, let's figure out a scale for this. Our highest y value is one, 
So I'm going to make the graph go up to 1 and down to negative 1. Um, on the y-axis, we're counting by 30s. Remember that 30 degrees, if we convert that to radians, you'll often see these graphs done in radians. That reduces, that's pi over 6. So let's recall that 30 degrees is pi over 6. And all of these are constructed from 30 degree angles. I remember that pi is uh, 180 is pi. We know all the way around is 2 pi. And we could convert all of these measures. But each line is going to represent pi over 6 or 30 degrees. So 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, which is pi. 210, 240. 270, 300, 330, 360 is 2 pi. So now all we have to do is plot each one of these points, starting with 0, 0. 30 degrees or pi over 6 goes up 1 half. If you punch this in the calculator, you'll see that this is approximately 87 hundredths. So over one half goes up, and that looks like about 0 0.87. That's 0 0.75, yeah. Okay, and you'll notice that the values simply begin to repeat. Pi over 2, we get that same value, and you quickly see, wow, this graph simply repeats the same values over and over again. And the more you graph trig functions, you'll start to memorize. I'm connecting these smoothly, as smooth as possible. Now, this is what we call one cycle. This is one cycle because after this, we could continue around and around the unit circle, but we just hit the same values, whether we go in the negative direction or the positive direction. So this graph goes forever, hitting the same values repeatedly. And we could do this to infinity in the negative and positive direction forever but from zero to two pi is one cycle of pi, I mean of sine. Let's look at the standard form for this graph. Um, y equals plus or minus a sine b parentheses x minus c parentheses plus d. The a, b, c, and d represent different numbers. First of all, if it's negative, that just shows a reflection. Okay? And that reflection is across the x-axis. A represents the amplitude. We'll define that in a moment. B represents the period. We'll also define that, but the period equals 2 pi over the absolute value of B. C, just like in every other graph we've done this year, is a horizontal shift, which is also called a phase shift. And D is a vertical shift. Remember the horizontal shift is left and right, opposite of sine. That's why you see the negative here. And the vertical shift is up and down, and that's true to sine. So positive means up, negative means down when we're talking vertical.
Now the period is the distance of one complete cycle. So if we look at the sine graph, one cycle is complete in two pi. So the normal period of the sine graph is two pi. Now, and remember one cycle, boom, that's one cycle. And so you'd be done with that and you'd land on two pi. The amplitude is the height from the midline to the maximum value. Now the midline, that's the middle of the graph. So the midline to the top of the graph, this height right here would be your amplitude. Let's do a sketch with a few changes. So y equals sine x, if we were to do a quick sketch of that, we see our a is two and our b is one. Whenever there's nothing written there, it's just a one. So the amplitude is two, which means the graph goes up to, down to, and our midline is the middle would be right there on the x-axis. Now, remember the period is two pi over b, but b is one, so the period is simply two pi, and the graph would stop there at two pi. And notice halfway is at pi. So this is a quick sketch of the graph. If we look here at part B, let's sketch this one. The first thing I want you to notice is that we have a reflection and we have a period change. So the reflection just means instead of the graph going up first, this graph is gonna go down first, okay? It's a simple reflection. Now, what does this mean? Two pi over one half is the new period, and that's the amount of time it takes to make one complete cycle. So that's gonna be two pi divided by a half, which is two pi times two over one, which is four pi. And that's the amount of time it will take to make a complete cycle. The amplitude is still one. So we're going up as high as one, down as low as negative one. Lastly, let's look at how to evaluate the domain and range. I've graphed a couple of graphs for you. Let's start with y equals sine x. Notice, remember that the domain is looking at what x values are present on a graph. We understand that this graph goes forever left and right because the sine and cosine graphs, we're gonna learn all the trig graphs, as a matter of fact, are periodic, meaning they just repeat over and over the same exact cycle, the same pattern. So if we ask ourselves the domain, all values of X, it goes forever. Now the range, we're looking to see what's going on with the Y values. This graph only exists from negative one to positive one. Negative one to positive one, including those values. Now, if we were using interval notation for the domain, that would be negative infinity to positive infinity. And if we were doing the range, we would use a closed bracket because it's equal from negative one to positive one. You'll learn more about that in pre-calculus.
Now, let's examine the domain and range for this last graph. I've shown you a graph that shifted up two units that's negative with a change in period. Notice the period here is 2 pi over 2, which just gives us a cycle of pi, a period of pi. It's the whole graph, you can do a cycle in pi. Anyway, the domain again is uh, all values are all real numbers for x. And again, that means from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range goes as low as zero, but as high as four. We see this graph goes up to four. In interval notation, that would be zero comma four with a closed bracket on both. Okay, that concludes our lesson for today.